Hi, welcome back to Mini Bird Chats. My name is Kate, and today I'm going to talk about some of the books that I read in the month of May. So this month I read quite a lot of middle grade, quite a lot of mysteries, and probably too much fantasy. I'm in a little bit of a fantasy slump at the moment. I didn't finish all my fantasy TBR from the month of May because I was just kind to feel like they were all kind of jimbling up in my mind a little bit. So I'm currently reading um, Ship of Magic. I'm about this far through. I really am enjoying it. I'm not loving it as much as the um, previous series of hers that I read because I absolutely love the character they follow in that one. Um, Assassin's Apprentice series, the Farsi trilogy. I just love the main character from those books. So this one's taking me a little while to get into because it's multi-POV rather than single POV. Fitz, there's his name, I can't remember his name. But um, I am enjoying it and I definitely want to finish this one. Um, I didn't get to um, the Miss Mod trilogy because I wanted to really savour it and enjoy it rather than just force to read it as quick as possible. Um, so I haven't read that one yet and I haven't continued on with some of the other books from that TBR but I read a lot this month. I read about 16 books overall. I'll just talk about some of the highlights um, and tell you about some of the ones I absolutely loved. We're going to start with the middle grades and we'll go middle grades YA adult. Seems like as good a way to organise it as any. So Brandon Sanderson re-released his um, Alcatraz and the Evil Librarians. Uh, the series is called, I think that's the series name. This is the first one and um, with new covers and the illustrations and everything in this book are just so cute. It's like full page illustrations. This is about a young boy who's been traveling through different um, foster homes, never really had anywhere to live. And then one day his grandpa turns up and says he's actually a gifted child and he's going to be part of this organization that um, allows free intelligence and free media with the librarians control books and access to different things to keep people away from developing new skills and learning new things. It's a really fun middle grade series. Following 13 year old Alcatraz, who is named after the prison, and um, it's just fun, it's super fun. It's kind of nonsensey, silly, but just a really fun read. I'm looking forward to continuing the series. If you do want something that's a bit silly, I'd recommend it. I think it's a five book series, maybe a six book series, but yeah, really looking forward to continuing it. It's just very fun, just silly and fun. Uh, for the Asian readathon, I also read Changelings by Christina Soon. No Torvant, I think that's it. Um, I would definitely read more from this author. She's now specialising in writing things around Thai mythology, which I think sounds super interesting. But this one was just, it felt like a very standard middle grade. There was nothing hugely outstanding about it. It was sweet. It's about a girl whose sister is taken by um, the fairy folk to go to their world. It used to be connected, now they're separated, and they send changelings to keep that um, connection between the two worlds together and she meets up with a group of changelings trying to get her sister back. It's a very sweet book, there's not very many challenges she comes across, it's very kind of standard. I think a child would really enjoy this but if you read a lot of middle grade this one doesn't really stand out but I did like the writing style and I definitely would read more from this author in the future. It just this one alone wasn't anything spectacular but it definitely wasn't bad, just not amazing. But you know what was amazing? I am absolutely obsessed with this book. This is Skandar and the Unicorn Thief by A.S. Stedman. Um, this is the special edition from Barnes & Nobles. And I bought this because I was given an arc to read of this book and I absolutely loved it. I thought it was so good that I actually then went out and brought this special edition. I absolutely love this story. So basically we follow a boy called Skandar and in the world it's England. And it's our world, but it's like a fantasy elements and in this world that he lives in um his dad his mom died quite a long time ago his dad's been very depressed has trouble holding down a job has a lot of problems and him and his sister are desperate to be unicorn riders and every year there's this big unicorn um tournament where people ride these unicorns and have a race and it's the only thing their dad has any enthusiasm about anymore and um, because their mom loved it so one year they're watching this race and everything goes wrong at this race and it's just before Skandar is due to take his his exam to be one of these people. So there's already a lot going on in the unicorn world and something happens. His sister's already failed the exam. She can't be a unicorn rider. And something happens and he does get the opportunity to be a unicorn rider, but there's a reason why. And you have to read the book to understand. I will say, to me, the book just started a little bit slow, but once I was in the story, I absolutely loved it. Writing style and plot, I'd say this is on the same level as the books that I love, Harry Potter, Percy Jackson, the Nevermore series. I just love this so much. And I'm so looking forward to continuing it. It just was a really engaging middle grade story with people that you really felt attached to. I love the world. I read the arc, read it again, and I, I could read it again. I absolutely loved it. It's one of my going to be one of my favorite books of the year. It's just so engaging. If you don't like middle grade, there's no point in me selling it to you because if you don't like things like Harry Potter, this isn't for you. But if you love those made up worlds, you'll probably really enjoy this one. And I'm so glad I read it. I just loved it. It was so good. I could do a video talking about this, but it's such a good book. And this edition is beautiful. So I hope um, if you do enjoy kind of things like Harry Potter and such, you give this one a chance, but I absolutely loved it. 
Um, moving into why I had two DNFs this month, I didn't finish um, Star Touch Queen or We Hunt the Flame, which were on my TBR, both for the Asian Readathon. Both um, were not what I was expecting. Uh, we Hunt the Flame, I was expecting more of like a Robin Hood story, but it's it felt like I'd read it before. I had ch twice put it down to check I hadn't read it before. It felt like a lot like a lot of other um, YA books that I'd read, and I don't think it's bad in any way. Just it wasn't what I was hoping for from it, so I did end up DNFing that one. And the same with the Star Trek Queen. I talk more and more on my unhaul video because I did unhaul it. Um, I was expecting like a very lush fantasy romance, but it wasn't that. It was a very young YA book. It was my fault. I just misunderstood it going into the book, and it wasn't for me. So I did DNF both of those. But I did read um, Our Violent Ends by Chloe Gong. This is the the final book in the duology of Our Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. Uh, this is about, um, it's a retelling set in 19 of Shanghai of Romeo and Juliet, where in this book they're in two rival gangs around the rise of communism, around the time of the rise of communism in China. Um, I really enjoy this story. There's basically these little insects that burrow in people's head and make them go crazy, and that is what's happening around this time. So you've got the two gangs, you've got the rise of communism, you've got um, a Romeo and Juliet story and then you've got horror elements, there's a lot going on and the only thing I would say with this book is it could have been easily 200 pages shorter it is around the 500 page mark and I think it could have been told in 300 I think maybe even the duology could have been one book it's not bad, it just a lot of unnecessary detail happens which now makes more sense because she is writing a spin-off series so I can understand why she was beefing up those characters if they're going to be in different books but unfortunately it kind of pulled away from this story a little bit and the horror element got lost and forgotten it didn't happen for a large part of this view this book and then it kind of came back and um, there's nothing I didn't like about it, it was just the pacing was a little bit off and a few things were happening that didn't seem very necessary so I'm glad I finished this book I probably won't read the spin-off series but I did enjoy this duology it's a very interesting story we're looking at the history of China but also from a fantasy point of view but also the romance there's a lot of things happening which are very good in this book it just could have done with a little bit trimming down in my very humble opinion um but yeah I do recommend this as a duology and it's nice to read kind of a different setting and a different setup for story especially YA fantasy but I enjoyed it I'd say it's a high three stars it just could have been trimmed a tiny bit for me personally and I've left this book out because this is my, the one I'm planning to read next, The Monarchs. It's not quite the end of the month when I'm filming this. This will be another one I read. The Sequel to the Ravens. I'm really excited about it. I just wanted to mention it because I keep saying I'm going to read it and I am going to read it. So moving into adult books, I did read A Book of Night by Holly Black. This is Holly Black's adult debut and it is set in a magical world around a con artist girl who, in this world, it's like our world but she has fantasy elements where people can manipulate and control shadows, particularly their own shadows. The magic system isn't hugely well explained so I can't explain it well to you but within the story it does work. It's a very like loose magic system but it works within the story. So basically our main character Charlie has been raised by um, a single mum and this man keeps taking her away when she's a child which is very strange I don't know why her mum allowed this but chain, basically he's training her to be a con artist and it's something she grew up knowing how to do and then years later it's just her and her sister and her boyfriend living in this flat and they don't know much about the boyfriend but he pays the bills and there's not many questions asked and then something happens one day that exposes who the boyfriend may really be and it's all to do with them the different abilities that people have to do with manipulating shadows around the story of this con artist girl trying to get away from being a criminal. It's a very short book for an adult fantasy. It's about 300 pages long and it, it the pacing's brilliant. It's super fast paced. It really reminded me a lot of Ninth House in terms of the imperfect character that you really root for. Um, I just really enjoyed it and it's nice to read an adult fantasy book which doesn't heavily rely on sexual assault and violence to move the plot along. It's just an interesting plot in itself. It's not a perfect book but I really enjoyed it and it's definitely, I, I enjoyed it as an adult fantasy. It's more like a new adult fantasy. It's somewhere between YA and adult but it's just really readable, really fun, really well paced and I'm really glad I read it. I was a bit worried about this because I didn't love the Cruel Prince series, but if you don't read fantasy because the levels of violence and such, I think you'd be okay with this one because it is much more what I would write in a fantasy. It doesn't rely on a lot of the awful things that happen in fantasy, especially to women. It relies on an interesting story to keep moving the pace along, which I really enjoyed. And yeah, I'm glad I read it. So I do recommend this one. I've seen some mixed reviews for it, but for me personally, it was a very enjoyable read. I also read the Cartographer's Secret by Tia Cooper. This is set in 1880 and 1911. So in 1880, a girl is very interested in her dad, knew an explorer, and they, her and her dad are very interested in writing stories around the exploration and finding out what happened to him because he went missing. And in the 1911 timeline, this girl goes back to this farm where her aunt, her great aunt lives to kind of claim her inheritance, basically. But she also becomes embroiled in this 
mystery and trying to find out what happened to what would have been her aunt and um, because she's always been told lies about who her aunt was and what happened to her and it's a really interesting story the book relies very heavily on the old aunt olivia who's in both timelines um not looking into the disappearance because she was worried about what she might find which doesn't really make much sense had she just looked in this basically there's a study that gets locked off and nobody goes in there and um, had she just looked into what happened in the study she probably could have solved what went on at least found more out about what went on when the girl first went missing let alone you know 40 years later 30 years later but in terms of describing the historical australia and the what they can see where they're going the environment the clothes the culture i really really enjoyed it and the little mysteries that come out it's rather than being like one overarching mystery it's a series of little things that happen it's it's a very interesting book i just wish it hadn't relied so heavily on kind of burying their head in the sand because it made it a bit unbelievable that that would have the mystery would have gone as far as it did um the other complaint i had is there's dual timelines where the same characters appear in both timelines and they use different names even if it's just an abbreviation on their name or they get called say grandma or aunt in the different timelines it gets super confusing because you're not 100 sure who's being talked about like the girl calls her mum mother sometimes sometimes by her first name and then her sister calls her by a different name and it just gets super confusing that was my main complaint about this book i was confused a lot i've read other tea keeper books which i've absolutely loved and i do love her writing style i always read hers i don't know if this was necessarily her strongest in terms of characterization but the mystery is very good and i just really enjoyed it but if one of my relatives were missing i would tear their office apart to find out what happened to them i wouldn't just close the door for 30 years but that's just me but yeah, i really enjoyed the book and i would definitely read more by tea cooper um, I also read And Then There Were None for the Agatha Christie Challenge. This was for a book set in Europe. This book is so dark. I hadn't realised how grim it was going into it. I'm used to Agatha Christie books being more like cosy mysteries, but this is more like a modern day thriller. Had it been written with today's thriller levels of violence, I'm not sure I would have been able to get through it because it is dark, it is creepy. It is about some people who are invited to an island um, under false pretenses and then they're slowly picked off one by one following the pattern of a nursery rhyme. And oh my goodness, this book is so dark. So dark. There's not much I can tell you about this book without giving the plot away. And I was really glad I didn't know the plot going into it. I'd never seen an adaptation of this book. I'd never really read it or, you know, read any, um, you know, spoilers about it. But I have read books that are based on it. Um, there's some books by Lucy Foley, which are very heavily based on the plot line of this and some other things I've seen. So I kind of knew the general idea, but it's really, really smart and very well written. And it was one of my favorite of hers, but I didn't love it because it was just so dark. Oh my goodness. It's, it's generally genuinely quite spooky I, mean, I also love this edition this is the Barnes and Noble special edition if you are interested in Agatha Christie this one would be a good place to start because it isn't in a series it's not a, there's no Poirot or a Miss Marple anybody investigating it's a completely isolated story so if you're interested in starting this one is a very good place to start there's no series you have to read or anybody you have to understand it's completely new characters but ah oh, it's dark I also read the third book in the Veronica Speedwell series by Deanna Rayborn. This one is called A Treacherous Curse. And this one it follows, De um, no, it doesn't, it follows Veronica solving a mystery around an Egyptian curse that is affecting some people who worked on a dig in Egypt and back when they're in the UK. I absolutely love the first book in the series. It was one of my favourite books I read this year, that year. And it is one of my favourite historical mysteries ever. Absolutely loved it. And since then, I found the rest of the series has been kind of a letdown. I haven't loved any of them. It felt like a lot of, it felt like maybe the first one was supposed to be a standalone because the characters are so well developed and it was such an interesting story. And then it got carried on into a series because they haven't been developed in the same way. But that could be my own prejudice because I love the first one so much that nothing's quite living up to that. But the, the other two in the books have been like high three stars. It was the first one was a five star book. I absolutely loved it. And um, so basically Veronica is a girl with no family and in the first book you basically find out who her family is really and she is paired up with an ex-army no ex-navy doctor to help solve this mystery she's looking into then the two of them work together she's a lepidopterist i think i was saying that right and he is a taxidermist and does other things and they get together and basically at the point we're in the series now they are working on putting together a museum for a benefactor they work for and solving mysteries along the way i do enjoy this series as i say i think i just none of them quite live up to the first book for me but they are fun characters it's a very slow burn romance it's a fun series i just wish they were always good the first one but maybe maybe that again that's just me i really enjoyed the elements of the first one and i can't give too much away without spoiling the series but the family connection she has in the first one just was so interesting and they're very much like outskirted in the second and third one however something was put up towards the end of this book which is going to be the plot of the fourth book and i'm definitely going to read it because it sounded really interesting and it really reminded me of the plot of um kerry greenwood's miss fisher mysteries so hopefully 
it goes that way but you'll see how it goes. I also read A Quiet Life in the Country by T. Kinsey. This is the opener to a new cozy mystery series about a woman um, who is a lady and she has had a very interesting life with her maid Flo and they then retire out to the country to try and live a, to try and live a quiet life and immediately get embroiled in a murder mystery and it's a really fun cozy mystery series it's just fun it's very light-hearted however they constantly talk about adventures they had in the past and i kind of want to read those adventures they sound really interesting they would travel with her husband before he passed away and get caught up in international espionage and all sorts of different things it just that's that life sounded really really interesting but it's a fun series i would like to continue it but you will not convince me this isn't fan fiction for these characters oh but i don't understand why i'm doing this art um, if you know who these people are, please comment down below because they are two of my favourite fictional characters ever and I wish they had got their own book series. But they, when I read these, this book, it's these two that I see in my head. So if there's a reference to me in the two, please do let me know. But yes, um, it's, just, it's a very fun book and the relationship between the people and um, upstairs, downstairs kind of intrigue was very fun and I would like to continue it. It's definitely more on the cosy mystery side than like Veronica Speed where it's more like a mystery in-depth kind of mystery thriller almost this is definitely that cozy armchair detective kind of stuff so if you like that's a good series and i think they're all available on kindle unlimited so they were all the books i read in the month of may i think my absolute favorite was scandal on the unicorn thief this is one of my favorite books of the year for sure so far please comment below if you've read any of these books please let me know what your favorite book you read in the month of may was like if you enjoy subscribe if you'd like to and i'll see you again very soon goodbye